The circus is meant to be a place of fun and wonder, of slapstick humour and daring acrobatic feats. But in India, some circuses have a darker side, involving the exploitation of trafficked children from Nepal. A lucky few are rescued. Many more are trapped in a big top world of abuse and neglect. The circus industry in India has a long and proud history, stretching back to the 19th century. Today, the traditional travelling big tops are still hugely popular, with hundreds of them offering entertainment across the country. But whilst some of these circuses are professional and well-run, many others are not. The industry has a dark side, a secret and sinister world involving child labour and the exploitation of child performers. It's feared that there are between one and 2,000 children involved, many of whom have been illegally trafficked from neighbouring Nepal, and many with disturbing stories of violence and abuse. <laughs> Since 2002, a Nepali-based NGO has been fighting to end this abuse and exploitation. The Esther Benjamins Memorial Foundation, also known as EBMF, has a core mission to identify, locate and rescue trafficked Nepali children. We rescued more than 300 children. We have done more than 30 circus rescues. Some of the circus we did twice. Yeah, now a few more we have to touch. Located in the Kathmandu Valley, the foundation has its own refuge, which offers sanctuary to 122 children. But it's unlike any other refuge. Almost half the children here have been trained as performers in Indian circuses. The Indian circuses recruits mostly uh, Nepali girls. The agents take the children from seven to eight. The parents actually give them for 500,000 rupees parents will be getting, but parents will not think that we are selling our own children. Parents only think that my child is going for a better life. In 2002, EBMF carried out undercover research in 30 circuses across India and identified 232 children under the age of 14. Most were girls and around half were from Nepal. That research revealed a catalogue of abuse, uh, physical abuse. The whole training of children, training of performers, was driven by violence. This is Sermala. She was seven when trafficked to the circus. This footage was taken just before her rescue in 2008. Training <laughs> Training or the car, you know, now you are free of the net. It's too much, isn't it? So, when you say, "Now, one day, guilty car, you see, guys, all the way, Rahira, the Karani, now, pit, not even one person, or now, guys, so all the way, put the attack, I'm not even put the attack, I'm not even put the. So, after this, I'm not even put the one. What's your name? After this, so you don't get around. After this, I'm just too much. Sermala is one of the lucky ones and is now living safely back at the refuge in Nepal. But it's not just violence and neglect that these children have endured. As time went on, we had a growing picture of, of sexual abuse as well. Essentially, those children inside the circus were totally at the mercy of the circus owner, uh, and he and his staff could do whatever they wanted with those kids. Because of the stigma around sexual abuse in Nepal, this girl wanted to remain anonymous. <laughs> Sermala 
सबले प्रे करते आएम थे आएम थे एक दिन ठक्क आए अशी मन लगे सब सुने भगवान ने हम प्रार्थना होने Each rescue by the foundation is different, but they all take the form of a raid. The element of surprise is crucial so children can't be hidden. Raids are always carried out with full police support, like this one in Assam in 2010 on the New Diamond Circus. Malikot. I like some of them right around here. Ola chinta. I think she's What's your name? Huh? Satu. Satu. Following this raid, the New Diamond Circus was closed and the owner was charged with child labor offenses. Eight children were rescued, five were Indian nationals, and the other three had been trafficked from Nepal. Amongst them was 9-year-old Chotu, who is a circus clown. He's from the border district of Hatauda, where most children trafficked to circuses from Nepal originate. Chotu was sold for $50 and was in the circus for a year. Following his rescue, family poverty made it impossible for him to return home. He now lives at the refuge where his father comes to visit. छोटूले चाहिँ पैसा कमाएर चाहिँ केही घरको लागि केही खानाको लागि खानाको लागि घरको लागि उसको भविष्य सुध्रिन्छ भनेर मैले छोडिदिएको अहिले यस्तो मैले दुईटा बाख्रा लिइराखेको थिएँ हो कि होइन बाबु एउटा बाख्रा पानी लागेर अस्ति मैले बाह्र सयमा कटाइदिएँ कटाइदिएर मैले त्यहाँतिर भएको अरू कुनै दिनुपर्यो भने तिरिदिएँ मैले Though EBMF has always been able to secure the cooperation of the Indian police, until April of this year, the law about child circus performers was ill to find. Then, new legislation came into effect. In India, the working of children is governed by the Child Labour Act, which very broadly prohibited the employment of children under 14 in industry. And industry did not include circus as an industry. with this new judgment the supreme court has one recognized children working in circuses as completely illegal secondly for the first time in india they've raised the age from 14 to 18 that children under 18 cannot be employed at a circus this new judgment is an amendment to the juvenile justice act it states that all children should be released from circuses by july the 19th 2011 In reality that deadline was always ambitious but for Shailaja and Philip it's a very positive step. Uh, in the past we've gone to circuses and we've we've come up against uh, almost like a smoke screen of of arguments of well this is giving work to children and and helping their families this is part of culture this is entertainment and all kinds of things like that but now the directive is quite clear that the use of children inside circuses is, is illegal. With the law on their side, EBMF is planning a new phase of raids, starting with the larger, more powerful circuses that have so far remained untouchable. One of those attracting suspicion is the Apollo Circus, which operates in northern India. Shailaja has managed to track the circus down and is keen to move things forward. She speaks with her colleague. Kaam thaa chim cha chim cha di mere bani ki eti dar poko ma. Ani ma janchu, ma Delhi janchu. Eh? अनि डेली गएर म उता कैतल जान्छु अनि गएर सर राउन्ड अप गर्छु किनभने हामी टेन्ट कहाँ लगाएर एकै गरे भने थाहा पाइहाल्छ न अनि वहाँ पोस्टरहरू लगाउँछ न मैले वहाँ यो हेर्न पर्दैन सर्कसमै जान पर्दैन पोस्टरहरू देखे त कुन कुन दिन कहिले देखे कहिलेसम्म वहाँ चल रही भनेर थाहा पाइहाल्छ न अनि म यो दिन गरम भनेर मैले चाइल्ड लाइन के साथ अरेन्ज गर्छ तिमीहरू अनि द ओनर अफ दिस सर्कस इज अ भेरी भेरी डेन्जरस मान a lot of political connections to to take on this circus and get girls out of that circus would send a message that would reverberate throughout the whole Indian circus industry we are at present in nepal the capital of kathmandu from kathmandu we will be flying soon to delhi and tomorrow early morning we will be going to dehradun we will be doing a research on this circus We are starting our journey for the rescue. Dilu, me, and once we find out and we fix the date, Philip and other team will be coming up. There are over 300 circuses in India. Though some of these may not be involved in child labour and trafficking, the vast majority are currently unregulated 
so their status is always difficult to check. In fact, only 12 of the country's largest circuses are registered with the Indian Circus Federation, a non-governmental monitoring body that ensures standards and good practice. Amongst them is the Great Bombay Circus. Here, there are no performers under the age of 18. We have, we have not been hiring for the last five years. And unregistered fellows who don't know anything about the law and, and they play in places where these laws are not enforced. We are made to pay for their sins. Whatever acts or omissions they do, it's slammed on us also. So some cases are pending against them, and then it, it is generalized as circus industry. And certain parts of the country are not, not only are they in general lawless, but they are also the hubs or the homes of these circus mafia which conduct a lot of other nefarious businesses through the circus. So it's not difficult for them to make the children disappear with the connivance possibly of government officers. Despite being one of the largest in India, the Apollo Circus remains unregistered and is operating in one of these so-called lawless states, Uttarakhand in the north of India. They stay in the state because the power, political power they have, and they are well known to the state, so nobody can attack them. They feel nobody will attack us. For us, all the circuses are same. We are not going to destroy them. We are not going for money or fight. We are going to take out only the children. Finally, they track down the Apollo in the city of Dehradun and are in time for the last show. Shailaja and Dilu are well known to the circuses, so they have to go in undercover. I have a black burqa, and Dilu has one, I have one. So you can go forward to see the circus wearing that. We go with them, disguised as tourists, to allow us to film secretly. Charlotte and Dilu counted 22 girls in all, many of whom they thought looked Nepali, and some they suspected of being under the legal age limit. So there are five, six younger girls below 14, you'll find but not more than that. And we don't know whether inside the small children are doing, the trainees are there. We don't know. So unless you do the radio, you will not know how many small ones are in for the training purpose. With the circus located and their suspicions confirmed, it's now a priority to get the rescue operation underway as quickly as possible. Before a raid on a circus, there are a number of building blocks that need to be put into place. And one of those is, is finding a host NGO. We are facilitating the team of Easter Benjamin. The team is briefed and also uh, oriented about the legal aspect of this case, the, this rescue mission, the rescue operation. Uh, we are briefing them with that and we are doing the capacity building for them. And second is that we would be presenting them on their request to our authorities. Every state in India has a Child Welfare Committee, or CWC, and it's their sole responsibility to deal with children in need of care and protection. Primarily, we are going to touch three authorities. First is CWC, that is Child Welfare Committee. Second is uh, District Magistrate. Third will be to inform Director General of Police also, but that will be our last thing. We expect that authorities are going to cooperate with us. The entire operation, the entire rescue operation has to be done within two days time, starting from today. Philip and the rest of the team have now arrived from Kathmandu. With the NGO on side, they head off to get authorization from the CWC, the district magistrate and the head of police. As the NGO deals with the paperwork, the EBMF team discuss the best time to do the raid. 
what do you think is soon after the show we end up mm -hmm. so that the girls might be changing and doing yeah that we can do because he's also right if you wait for morning you don't know flow with the head of police and the district magistrate's consent now given, the operation hinges on permission being granted by the Child Welfare Committee. Word finally comes through later that evening. There's been a, a last-minute spanner in the works in that the uh, district magistrate has told the representative from the local Child Welfare Committee that she's not to go on the rescue. And we're wondering if the circus people have got to him. Suspecting that someone is trying to stall the raid, the whole operation feels increasingly under threat. In the police station, we all are here. And even they, have, they got permission from DM, and they got permission from the police inspector. So what do you think? Shall we all go to the DM to meet? Whilst outside on the phone to the NGO, Shailaja is told that the district magistrate has proposed a meeting for tomorrow with the circus owner. We don't like, it is not our policy uh, having meeting with the circus owner, we don't like. We didn't come to do anything, we came only for the children, you know. Calling the owner and sitting and talking with us, none of the children will be there. What is you staying here and sitting with the circus owner, the meeting? It's useless. This state government have given priority to the owner of the circus, not to the children. Even after ruling the Supreme Court. So I don't think we have to be... We cannot do anything. We came here for the children. If you are not getting children, sitting in a meeting and talking negotiation issues. Tired and frustrated, the team head back to the hotel. They have an overwhelming feeling that the circus is being protected. When the circus owner is in DM's hand, he knows that nobody is going to attack me. I can run freely. And the circus is running very clearly. He's not bothered about, I can give children. Who is going to attack me? The district magistrate wanted to conduct a, an investigation at the circus itself, and that is totally against the Juvenile Justice Act. The only way to actually research the circumstances of the children and the girls is to take them out of the circus, take them to a neutral location, distance them from the actual circus management so they can speak freely, and research their circumstances in that way, in a non-threatening manner and he was not prepared to do that. The next day they get a tip off. The local NGO and the Child Welfare Committee are carrying out an inspection inside the circus compound. Shailaja and her colleagues drive straight to the circus and park up outside. As we were sitting outside the circus, trying to establish what was actually going on, uh, very sharp-eyed Shalaja and Delu saw the, the circus gates being opened and they saw a group of little girls being, being brought out of the circus uh, by a couple of adults. Concerned the children are being taken from under the noses of the inspection team, Shalaja calls the police and they intercept the group. To protect the children's identity, we have disguised their faces. From the group, two of the girls were performing in the show that Shaila Jurandilu had investigated three days earlier. A crowd gathered, little by little. The girls became very emotional, there was a lot of crying. Uh, they, of course, were disorientated. They didn't know where they were going. They were being told that these foreigners were taking them off to America, um, all kinds of things. So it was actually a, a very dangerous situation, potentially, and the circus was a stone's throw away. Whilst waiting for the police to arrive, tensions build. Shailaja is concerned that if the children are taken back inside the circus, they will feel intimidated and scared to speak freely. <laughs> Eventually, the inspection team emerged from, from the circus. Uh, they then made their way with, with the, the children heading back towards the circus, which was a bizarre decision. 
And it just really seemed to indicate to us they didn't know what they were doing. They are taking you inside. What is happening? It is not fair. We, we are doing our official work. We are not taking them back into the circle. Thankfully at that point a, a, a police vehicle arrived and all the children were, were picked up. Now in police custody, the girls are taken to the CWC government home. The EBMF team follow. When they arrive, they are barred from entering and having any further access to the children. This, they are told, is because all the children are migrated Nepalis with Indian nationality and are therefore outside of EBMF's jurisdiction. At the same time, we are stopped from attending an impromptu press conference. We find out later that the local NGO has claimed credit for the rescue operation. The local NGO made a mistake and went inside and they were shown all the big children. That is why they were put out. Even they were inside and the children are coming out. If we were not there for one minute, the children could be escaped. It was the luck of the children as well as us catching them in front of the circus suddenly. Six children were rescued that day. They were all under 14 years old and of Nepali origin, whose families now live in India. After 10 days of counselling, the children were reunited with their relatives. Although successful in rescuing some of the children, this operation highlights the enormity of the authorities' task in removing child performers from circuses. We asked the government body responsible for the protection of child rights how it planned to follow up this rescue operation. In the event of our receiving a complaint, there are certain children being found working in Apollo Circus at the Radhun. We'll definitely be sending a team from our commission to investigate into the incident and in case anybody is found to have indulged in violating their child rights or violating their laws, they will be taken, whether it is the manager of the, or the owner of the Apollo Circus, or any district magistrate, or anybody else for that matter, any government officials, if he's found to have indulged or connived with the circus manager, circus owner, they'll be taken care of and they'll be duly dealt with as per the law provides for. In the aftermath of the raid at Derridoon, the circus owner was reported to the Labour Ministry and is facing charges of bonded labour and child labour but the authorities have yet to conduct any further investigation. Meanwhile, the Apollo Circus is still operating in and around the North Indian state of Uttarakhand. It's thought that four of the children, seen performing in the show, are still inside. The bottom line is there are still girls within that circus. And of course, the circus owner is still a free man. Um, so my feeling at this stage is that there's another four or five years of work in this. Um, not not only in terms of monitoring the circuses, but I think also in, in developing um, perhaps some of the, the better circuses that are trying to change with the times and encourage them down the right path. Back at the refuge, some of the more recently rescued children, like Chotu, are settling into their new lives. Now with a chance of a real childhood and an education. For Shailaja, it's back to planning for the next raid. I'm not a specialist in anything except the rescue. I always go for the rescue and I'm capable of doing that. And it's quite risk for me, but still I'm doing. And maybe God is giving me the power to do, because we are not going to harm anyone. It is, we are saving the life of the children. <laughs>